we are working our way through commercial policy we know the meaning of commercial policy and in the last lecture video I had introduced the concept of consumer surplus producer surplus and total surplus and here what surplus means is the extra benefit enjoyed by consumers producers or the society as a whole because of market transaction in the last video we had looked at the demand curve and a supply curve and these two intersect at a point which is the equilibrium point at this point we can determine the price that will be three dollars and we can bring this point to the horizontal axis we know how much is the quantity demanded three units and how much is the quantity supplied it is three units or in other words in this country demand equals supply at this particular price or essentially what we are looking at is equilibrium in autarky or a situation of no trade now based on this diagram we know we know that this area one which is the area of this triangle which is above the equilibrium price represents consumer surplus then we have this area 2 which is the area of the triangle below the equilibrium price and this represents producer surplus which we denote as 2 so what is the total benefit derived by the country or the society when there is no foreign trade the total extra benefit derived by the society is the total surplus which is the sum of consumer and producer surplus so it's one plus two so this is the welfare consequence of having a market economy when it is not engaging in foreign trade so we know this is equilibrium in autarky and the price paid by buyers and sellers in autarky will be three dollars and the quantity traded which is demanded and supplied will be three units in autarky now suppose from a position of autarky the country decides to engage in foreign trade and in this case this product is being sold in the world market for one dollar when we had no trade the same product was being sold in this country for three dollars so the, what this country will do is it will start importing this product why because the price is lower in the world market and so this green line horizontal line represents the world price or this is the free trade price now at this price if this country decides to engage in foreign trade how much will be supplied by the domestic sellers it will be one unit and how much will be demanded by the local consumers in this country it will be five units so the domestic supply is one the domestic demand is five so this country must be importing four units of this good from the world market and at what price it will be at one dollar another thing to note is when you move from autarky to a situation where the country starts to import what you find is the supply of this product has scaled back because of cheaper imports so the production has fallen and chances are employment in this industry must have fallen as well what has happened to the demand when we compare free trade with autarky it has increased from three to five units and here since demand is greater than supply the difference is the imports by this country now let us compare the welfare consequences of free trade when a country starts to import a product with that of autarky we already know from our previous discussion that EA is the equilibrium in autarky 
and we know how much price is paid by consumers and what price is received by sellers in our RP. And so based on our previous discussion, we know this area of the triangle denoted by one, which is enclosed here. This represents the consumer surplus in autarky, which is one. What about producer surplus in autarky? It will be this whole triangle, this whole triangle, or it will be a sum of two plus three. So here we have the producer surplus, which is two plus three. And we know the total surplus in autarky will be one plus two plus three or the sum of consumer and producer surplus. <clears throat> now, when this country engages in foreign trade, it is paying the world price, which is lower than the autarky price. And we know when the country decides to import this product, the domestic production falls, and so does domestic employment. Now, let us look at the welfare consequences of free trade. If the consumers in this country are paying this world price, what will be the extent of the consumer surplus? It will be this entire triangle above the price that these folks are paying. So this entire triangle represents, or the area of this entire triangle represents, represents consumer surplus or in terms of these numer Roman numerals that I have used, it will be a sum of one, two, four, and five. So here we have consumer surplus under free trade, which is a sum of one, two, four, and five. What about the producer surplus? Now the world price is this one. The producer surplus will be denoted by this Roman numeral three. So producer surplus under free trade will be three. And what will be the total surplus? It will simply be the sum of consumer and producer surplus. And so this will just be one plus two plus three plus four plus five. So what we find is <clears throat> as compared to autarky, consumer surplus under free trade is much larger than what we have under autarky, which is simply one. And here it is one plus two plus four plus five. So consumers are happy because under free trade, they are able to derive even more extra benefit from this transaction. What about producers? Compare free trade where you have three representing producer surplus under free trade. Compare this to what we have under autarky, which is two plus three, and thus the producers are unhappy with foreign trade because their extent of extra benefit that they derive from market transaction has diminished. What about the society or the country as a whole? Because of importing or permitting free trade, we find under free trade, it is a sum of one, two, three, four and five. What is it in autarky? It is just one, two and three. Or in other words, the total welfare of the society is much higher under free trade relative to autarky. And by how much? It is given by the area of four plus five. So this is how we can use consumer and producer surplus to rank different policies we can compare what is the out welfare consequences of having free trade and what is the welfare consequences of having no trade and compare the two outcomes and here we have shown that free trade is a superior solution relative to no trade though we know consumers are happy with this outcome and producers of importables are not so this completes our discussion of comparison of free trade versus autarky in terms of consumer, producer, and total surplus. Thank you for your time.